G'day, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing great. I'm drinking a hot coffee on a hot day. Not the best decision, but a decision nonetheless. So today we're looking at density inside DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways how to do it in the free version of Resolve, and then we'll go through and I'll show you how to do it using a paid DCTL, which is better than the free version, but you can still achieve really good results using the free version. First of all, if you want to skip ahead, there's timestamps just down the bottom here. Or you can just go to these times here and that'll click you through each portion of the video. This is the image before we've done any grading and this is before the density. And then this is the image afterwards. So we've gone a long way and we've done that with some color management and using some other techniques. Let's do our color management real quick. Our first node is our color space transform. So what I'm working with today is a Blackmagic Pocket 4K footage. So I've done a color space transform on my first node, input color space is black magic design, wide gamut gen four five. Input gamma, whoops, input gamma, black magic design film gen five, and then output color space DaVinci wide gamut, and then output gamma DaVinci intermediate. Now if we go across to our timeline nodes, this will come last. So it's always important that this will generally come last when it comes to your color grading. So this is another color space transform. So we're going from input color space of DaVinci white gamut, input gamma DaVinci intermediate, but our output color space is of course Rec 709 and output gamma, gamma 2.4. Now in our tone mapping, we're gonna use DaVinci. We're not gonna use luminance mapping just because I found that DaVinci is giving us a less magenta skin tones, which I like. A uh, max input nits is 10,000. And then we use custom max output, 100, adaptation 9, and then gamut mapping method, you want to do saturation compression. So if you want to follow these, completely up to you guys, or you can do something else. But these are the settings I'm using today. And when it comes to our color management, we're just using this. So this isn't actually affecting our image, all our images being affected by our node base color management. Let's look at the first way to do some density with our image here. So what I'm gonna do is with this node here, I'm going to right click, I'm gonna go down to composite mode, then I'm gonna go down to luminosity. Now this is only gonna affect the brightness of the image, it's not gonna affect the color. So if I did saturation here, it has no effect on our image whatsoever. So we're not adding any color in, we're just adding lighting. So what does that mean? Well, that means we can push down the brightness of our colors without changing those colors. So let's go to our RGB mixer, something that people don't ever seem to use, but I think RGB mixer is a fantastic tool, something you should familiarize yourself with because it's going to give you some really interesting results. Let's go down to monochrome here. When we make any changes, as you can see, we are brightening or darkening up our image in certain parts. So if we want a or darker kind of look, we can sort of mess around with it. And if we bring this right up, we're pushing those green up, so we're getting a brighter green. But if we want those deep, rich greens, and we're gonna bring it down. And as you can see, we have a really nice looking green here. Now this green has been affected by something else, so I probably should have done a different look, but we'll just run with it. Now the red one is obviously gonna affect your skin tones more. So if you push it right up, you're getting a more washed out skin tone. So it doesn't look really natural. So I like to bring it down a little bit. So something around there looks pretty good. Maybe we could go up a little bit brighter. So bring these blues down a little bit and bring these skin tones down just a little bit. So that's where we've gone with a couple little changes. And of course you'd wanna muck around and finesse and Try to get the image that works best for you, but we'll go full screen. So this is our image prior to those density changes. And this is afterwards. And then we've got this really nice, rich looking image. And of course you can go as further as you want and just keep pushing it. Or you can just leave it as it is. And I think it looks really good. So for now, we're just gonna leave it. And what we'll do is we'll grab a still. So let's go up to our gallery here and we'll make a, a new album and we'll call it Dense for density, because I'm too lazy to spell density. 
and we'll press Control, Alt, and G, and that'll grab that image there. So let's reset this. Now let's get rid of our gallery up here. So let's look at a different way how to do that density. So again, we don't actually have to do luminance when it comes to this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our curves here. Now we're going to go across to U versus luminance or color versus light. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this around. Now this one is not as good because it doesn't affect your image as much, especially when you've done adjustments already. But we're going to play around with it and see what we can do. And again, we're just sort of selecting colors, bringing them up, bringing them down. Because we want those richer tones, let's just see what we can do here. Really not affecting the image as much as I would like it to. So let's make it full screen. So this is off and this is on. So it really hasn't done all that much. It's not really great. Still targeting certain areas, but it's not working as well as our RGB mixer, which I think is. Again, fantastic, and you should definitely check it out and try to familiarize yourself with that. Now, there is another way we can do this density. So let's reset this node. We can actually do it using our wheels here. So we're gonna change this to, again, luminance. Now, this way is not as good. Um, it's really not affecting our image in a way that really works for me. We're still not getting a color change, but we can move it around using our gain here. If we go towards blue, we're getting that darker blue. I want to bring those skin tones up, push it towards red. And as you can see, it's like really bringing them up a bit, but then we're kind of losing it again. So it's more of a balancing act when it comes to using our wheels here. It's not horrible. I do find the RGB mixer works a lot better. Even add some contrast in. But again, not perfect. You need to fool around a lot more with it, familiarize yourself with it. And it's not something I would do. But again, it is just another option. So if you wanted to do some density using this, then that is another technique you can do. So let's reset. Actually, oh, we forgot to grab a still. <laughs> um, we'll reset this. And then we'll go back to our luminance one and we'll just bring it all the way down. Um, see what we can do here. Um, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. We don't actually need to be in the luminance. So we'll just go normal. Grab that still. Yep, it's all good. We'll call this one U versus Loom. And then we'll call this one Archie. B. Okay, so let's reset this. Now we're going to use the another technique using a DCTL, which is of course a plugin. This is a great plugin. I've used it many times before in many different projects. So let's go to effects here, and then already have DCTL selected. But if you don't, just type it up here: DCTL. Bring it across. Now I have many DCTLs. Um, so we're going to choose the mono density 2.2. Okay, now to get into this mode, just press Shift F on a Windows, and I have no idea what it is on a Mac, but I'll look it up and I'll do a little thing down here. With our DCTL selected, if we wanted to do the skin tones here, we would just go up to our red density and bring it down. And as you can see, it's really targeting those skin tones really nicely. And we could do a overall adjustment for our density, which is really bringing it down. We're getting a really nice looking image here. And again, it's completely up to what you guys like as colorists and what you're trying to go for. So if you want to go something that's really deep, really moody, you could bring it right down or you could just bring it up a little bit more to get an image that has density in it but it's not over the top. Grab the still gallery and we'll call it DCTL. And then we can have a look. So we're gonna go RGB and this DCTL. So if I double click this, 
Okay, so this is the plugin that we just use, and then this would be the free version using the RGB mixer. So obviously we have a very different result. This one looks probably more natural when it comes to using that density. Skin tones look really nice, really nice roll off. And then this is the free version. Now, of course you could go back and you could probably try and match this a bit better. We could bring those skin tones down. We could overall make the image look better. But overall, I think both images actually look quite nice. We have this nice skin tone and nice dense blues here and our green looks fantastic. And this one, it is a more of a moody type of look. So you'd say a more dramatic look, I guess you'd wanna say, perhaps depressing. I mean, obviously colors create mood. So you might, maybe you would say this is a more depressing look. And this is more upbeat. Not that upbeat because it's still pretty dark and moody. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a long time since I've made one. I've been incredibly busy. I have a music video coming up, which I need to film, shoot, edit, and color, which should be a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. So I've been prepping for that. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys have been up to. I'm a bit away, so I apologize for that, but I'm interested to know any color projects you're working on, anything you're shooting, anything you would like to see. Make sure to comment below. Thanks again for watching. These videos wouldn't be possible without your support. I've been Drew, and you guys have a great day.